Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Florida's number one podcast. Three, two, one. That is producer Ben Castro. Don't blame us. Good job, Ben, here at Podcast Junkie Studios. You are looking live to you. At Rod Peterson and Serena Taylor, uh, the two halves of Florida's favorite NHL podcast and most viewed as well, the Cats and Bolts podcast. It's episode number 29, and I like to come up with names. Write it down, Ben. It's the player survey episode of the Cats and Bolts podcast. In a second, I'm going to explain exactly what that is. Uh, as I mentioned, we're in downtown Boca Raton, Florida. Podcast Junkies brought to you by DraftKings, Beach House, Pompano, and Bresco. In a second, or actually later on, I'll tell you more about them. But uh, Serena, it's a fun fun show to get to when we talk about the player survey and all that kind of thing. I'll just ask you, how are you doing? Fantastic. I can't yeah. wait to talk about player surveys now. Yes, and I know there's a lot of people that are like, what exactly is Rod talking about? Well, <clears throat> right off the top, I'm just going to tell you, the National Hockey League Players Association every year does an association survey of its member players. And the categories are these. If you have one game, what goalie are you picking? One game, one goalie, who is it? She doesn't know the answers, by the way. We're going to ask her what hers are, and I'll give you mine as well. One game, one forward, who would you take? One game, one defenseman, who would you take? We have the winners of the vote. Who's the best stick handler in the NHL? Who is the most complete player? Who do you least enjoy playing against but would prefer the most to have on your team? I'm, see, I'm giving you time to yeah, think I'm about thinking. these. See, She's it. like, I smell the smoke. She's thinking, <laughs> who's the best outlet passer in the National Hockey League? Who's the best playmaker? Who is the most difficult to play in the D zone? Who's the best on faceoffs? Who's the best style Who's got the best drip off the ice? What's the toughest rink to play in as a road team? Who has the best ice? And what's the best global destination where you would like to see NHL games played outside of Canada and the USA? But before, so that's all coming. So I want you all to be thinking about that and your answers as we move along. But as we roll into point two, I'll ring the bell every time we switch categories. We do talk about the Panthers and the Lightning here. It's what we do. The week that was, the Panthers. It's, this is a good news, bad news thing, Serena, depending how you look at it. For the Panthers, they're 4-4-2 four, four, and two in their past 10 games, but they have points in three straight. That includes two shutout wins over Ottawa and an OT loss at Boston. Uh, and I'll talk about their playoff opponent in a moment. How are you feeling about the Panthers as we are a week away from the end of the regular season? Well, I think there's been a little bit of stress over there in the past couple of weeks. Like we talked about it last week, the playoffs are a completely different animal. You never know what's going to happen in the playoffs. Do I think the Panthers have to be worried? Eh, every team realistically should be worried because people are going to come out, teams are going to come out and play differently. Their record, I don't think, indicates how good of a team they are because they beat Ottawa twice. I wouldn't be, that's not something I would use to hang my hat on and say, oh, well, we've got a long playoff run coming. We beat Ottawa twice. That's a struggling hockey team right now. So they're not beating great teams. Mm -hmm. They haven't really played, to be fair, they haven't really played a lot. Boston, the other day, Toronto mopped the floor with them last week. That was a one-off. I don't expect Florida to look like that every game. I don't, Toronto doesn't look like that every game. <laughs> but I, Florida hasn't played a lot of quality teams like solid teams over the past couple of weeks to really determine they've lost some games that they shouldn't have but that's a different story well what can i say this has um been around the game my whole life i know we have new viewers here we're two original canadians but now living here in south florida and uh, covering the panthers and the lightning but i've been in the game my whole life and i what i think it's no different it's not a hockey thing it's a sports thing you've heard of the slump buster I think the Senators are the ideal slump buster for the Panthers. They beat them 6-0 up there, beat them 2-0 down here. It's all about confidence. Everything is about confidence. And if that's what it takes to gain their confidence rolling into the playoffs, I'm all for it. I don't care who it's against. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, I wouldn't be pleased with their play overall over the last couple of weeks. I know Paul Maurice keeps saying not to worry about it because he's got a lot of things. Again, he knows the ins and outs of what his game plan is for what's coming up, but I wouldn't really use it as a marker to determine if it's going to be a long playoff run. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and we will look at all these same things for the Lightning in a second, but it will be 
as we sit here today, the Panthers and the Toronto Maple Leafs in another playoff meeting, just like last year, which the Panthers won a round two series against the Leafs. What happened up there last week? As she said, the Leafs jumped out to a 5-1 lead, then had to, over the Panthers and had to hang on to win 6-4. But none of these regular season meetings compare to what will happen in the playoffs. Uh, what do you think would happen in a Toronto-Florida first-round series? I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to play the Leafs right now if I was Florida for a variety of reasons. Number one, what happened last year? You learn a lot more lessons when you lose than when you win. And the Leafs are going to be ready. And I've seen the Leafs. The Leafs bang around Edmonton a couple of weeks ago, scoring five on them. You know, same thing beating up on the Panthers. These are Edmonton and Florida are great hockey teams. The Leafs look like they did not care. They were beating up on everybody. So it just kind of, it's going to kind of depend on who's rolling, but it's going to go, it can go one of, I wouldn't be surprised who wins either way. I would probably be, more surprised if Toronto wins, but that has nothing to do with the Panthers. Mm-hmm. Toronto just notoriously likes to lose in the playoffs, but I don't think that's going to happen this I'm year. I'm interested to hear you say that, and here's why I think I think the Panthers would win this, but it would be a longer series than last year. It was five games. I went to all those games, and the Leafs just looked rattled. They looked nervous. The Panthers looked in that series like they did all playoffs, like they were playing with house money. Nobody expected them to be there. We've talked on this show about the expectations. This would be a longer, more difficult series. And to be honest, it kind of dawned on me why you said the Panthers were a fluke to get to the Stanley Cup final last year. Because if you do it every year, it's not a fluke. But if you get their one-off, once every 30 years, it's a fluke. Is that what you're saying? Well, it was just they beat teams that they won. Let me Let me rephrase this. Anybody can beat anybody. I firmly believe that. The Panthers did that last year. But they won games that they didn't deserve to win. Straight up. Yes, a win is a win. But there was a lot of other stuff I've seen. I saw come into play there that I just... The refing, the officiate, it was, it was garbage. They, they beat Boston because of some terrible calls against the Bruins. That's a fact. Everyone agrees with that outside of a 25-mile radius here. Mm-hmm. Everyone agrees with that. So... They shouldn't have even got past Boston. So it was a fluke, in my opinion, that they were, they're not the only team that's done that. There's been other teams that have fluked their way. I mean, scraping into the playoffs and getting to the Stanley Cup final. Edmonton did it in 2006, barely got in the playoffs. And it, it they fluked. They beat Detroit in the first round. That was a fluke. Really, that was a fluke to me because nobody saw it coming. They swept Anaheim, I think. or And it was like, what what is happening here? But it catches up. And, you know, the Panthers are a different team. They're a year more mature, different yeah. team player-wise, but they're a year more mature. But so are the Leafs. The Leafs did not make any major moves, which is why I would be concerned. Their goaltending is really coming into play right now. Their defensemen are kind of picking up, but they have some forwards on that Leafs team that bang and crash. The Panthers think they bang and crash, not like some of the Leafs yeah. do. So... It, it's going to be, it would be a great series, yeah. a completely different series from last year. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, and that's a change. But it would be an epic series. It would be longer, I think. It was five games last year. But I love how the Panthers have matured. We've watched it in front of our own eyes. They are that crash and bang team. They just haven't been lately, but the Leafs have matured too. So it would be a great series. The Leafs have guys like Matthew Nyes and the Bertuzzi kid, and they do not stop moving. Mm-hmm. Even if the Leafs are losing, they keep playing hard. And that's one thing I can't say for the Panthers. Once they start losing, you can see. You can see it. There's a disconnect. What's going on here? What is happening? Right at this second in Toronto, it's not like that. Not saying it won't be because it has been. But yeah, well, like next that. week, by the way, will be our playoff preview. We'll know the playoff pairings by then, and it will be a brand new season. I don't expect Matthew Kachuk will be taking dumb penalties in the playoffs. We've talked about how they won't be playing Stolars in games like the Ottawa game. It'll be Bob every night. It's a different season, but we'll talk about that next week as we move along to the Tampa Bay Lightning. And I'm like, they have won seven of their past ten. They're seven, two, and one. In their most recent game, they scored four unanswered goals to come back and beat Columbus 5-2. Ho-hum. You and I watched the game in Pittsburgh where, final minute, who are they throwing out? Stamkos, Hedman, Kucherov, Point. It's murderer's row. 
That right? game was probably that third period between Pittsburgh and Tampa Furious. was unbelievable. One of the best periods of hockey, probably the best I've seen all year. It was so good. And Pittsburgh is clamoring for a playoff spot. That's why there was that intensity in there. But it Tampa's that team that nobody has expected them to win all year, just like we were just saying about the Panthers last year. Nobody expected them to win, so they were just coasting along behind the scenes. That's what Tampa's doing right now. I wonder, we talk about this a lot on this show with John Cooper, and I love him. He's from Prince George, former Notre Dame Hound, graduated with my brother, same class. Um I looked up the criteria for coach of the year the other day. It's the coach that contributed most to his team's success in the regular season. Isn't that, and it seems obvious, right? But my criteria was whose uh, team overachieved the most in the regular season. There's a slight difference there, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think John Cooper cares? No. No, I wouldn't think he would either. Listen, these are hockey guys. They're not arrogant. They don't care if they win coach of the year or not. They're there to win the Stanley Cup. Yeah. That's what in kids in Canada, that's what we grow up dreaming about is winning the Stanley Cup. Even as a female, as girls, we pretended we were winning the Stanley Cup. We played for the Stanley Cup. That's what we do. He doesn't care if he wins coach of the year or not. And with a team like that, how can you really say that he contributed to the team? It's stacked. Yeah. Uh yeah, but it's just they didn't have Vazzy till the end of November, largely, and they still were in a playoff spot through that whole time. He had to devise a way to win games without the best goalie in hockey and did. When Nobody the, cares. When the teams get out there to play, though, that's on them. Practice and the preseason and all that kind of stuff is about what the coach can do. It's all on the players to get out there and make it happen. That's why I think everybody subconsciously is getting a little bit stressed out about Paul Maurice right now because he's like, I got it under control. I'm just trying to figure things out. You should have been figuring these things out six months ago. That's why everybody's upset and worried about what's going to happen. You don't see John Cooper having to say that stuff. Nobody asked John Cooper, what's going on with your lines? They don't have to. I don't know any other coach in the NHL that gets asked that. Is it just me or like John Cooper has the same expression all the time? It's like even when he's he mad, looks, he looks very unimpressed. He looks like somebody farted in the room. He's like, even when he's mad, or all he's the time, yelling, he looks the same all, all the, time. the time. Even when he's happy, yeah. he looks unimpressed. Yeah, John Cooper. So yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I don't think he cares whether he's coach of the year or not, but it is a bit of an unfair snub because he does a great job every year, particularly well, this year. People expect it though. Do you get to the point where you expect it? You know, it's like, um, uh, who would be a good example? <sighs> Maybe Laviolette, it, somebody like that. You don't. Sometimes you don't expect it. Guys slide into places. You're like, whoa, look at that team. It's got to be the new coach. But John Cooper's been a steady for so long. Yeah. That doesn't shock anybody. Well, they, they, they say that it's a slam dunk that Rick Tockett and Vancouver will win coach of the year because nothing changed there but him. Well, I'll tell you something. I've never seen a team quietly be as good as the Canucks have overall. They're beatable by far. They're 100%. They're not the best team in the NHL. But what he's done, he's just kind of sliding them through. They're not making a lot of noise, uh, and that's rare that that happens. We're going to get to this player poll, trust me, but I feel like we will fly through it, so that'll take us right to the end of our time. I want to ask you this, because I'm genuinely interested in your opinion, as you know. We tease each other, but... You get 30 minutes a week where this man is interested in my opinion. <laughs> How about it. that? And I have to pay for it. Um, <laughs> the DraftKings odds. I looked them up. The DraftKings odds for the Stanley Cup champion. I can't off the top of my head remember them all, but I can remember this. Carolina's number one. Florida's number two. And I believe Edmonton's number three. So Panthers fans that were panicking, chillax. The odds makers have a number two, but... Ca- Carolina? What do they base the odds on? I'm actually genuinely I'm curious. At, I was hoping you would tell me. It, I don't know enough about the betting world. Maybe it's potentially how well Carolina's been. But honestly, I don't think Florida's a number two. I wouldn't be betting on Florida a number two to win the Stanley Cup. But why Carolina? They haven't won the Stanley Cup in almost 20 years. They never. They got swept last year in the Eastern Final. I would love to yeah. know that criteria, too. Because they're I don't still mad? Is. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I have no idea. Why isn't... But would you go along with that Carolina's number one? Betting? Uh, I feel like they're beatable. I feel like they're more beatable than some teams. 
But I, again, I don't know enough about the betting thing to really. It's say. different. It's different. Yeah, it's betting's different. different it's, oddly no enough, than just picking who you think is going to win the Stanley Cup. Because to be honest, I think you would look at the standings and go, "Well, the Rangers, they're on the verge of their best regular season in franchise history." Mm. Yeah. That's why it doesn't. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Anyway, um, I have other questions that we will get to after we talk about the player survey because it's so much fun, and I hope you weren't looking at my sheet. No, I can't. No. Okay. For the, again, if you just joined us, the National Hockey League Players Association does this survey every year, and everybody can't wait for it to come out because it's the players voting on a variety of these topics. It's very important. Because at the start of the season, NHL.com had a survey. They didn't have, even have Bob listed in the top 10 goalies in the National Hockey League. I'm like, who's voting on this? Oh, the media? The guys that aren't even watching the game? The guys that have guys a that college don't... football game on their iPad at the game? <laughs> the guys that don't go to the game? Yeah, I, uh, I don't care about the NHL.com. This we care about. You know what I'm saying? Because the players know. One game, one goalie, who would you take? This, did did to you this, see this? No, no, no. I haven't seen it. I'm thinking one game, one goalie. That's a it tough one. It shouldn't be that hard. No, it is because it, it right this second, I would probably go with Bobrovsky. It's Andre Vasilevsky with a runaway 47% of the vote, and it's the third straight year that he's won. Here's why I didn't pick Vasilevsky. He's been way too hot and cold this year. We've seen some good things out of him, but we've seen some funnel out of him. That's why I, I feel like Bobrovsky's had a better season, and that's why, based on what I've seen lately, I would pick Bobrovsky. But I was initially going to go with Vazzy. Like when the Panthers were there and lit him up to the tune of 9-2. Well, I think they pulled him after six goals. You know what I'm saying, though. But no, I, it was not. He didn't play that bad. He just couldn't, like, nothing was. Vasilevsky was won him. by a mile. Igor Shosturkin of the Rangers with 7%. Ilya Sorokin of the Islanders with 6%. And Connor, three Russians. Yeah, well, and I'm... then Connor Hellebuck, an American, at 5%. I don't know why Canada can't grow goalies, but that's not a topic for today. I would, um, it's funny because a guy like, there's a lot of goaltenders that have good records, but they're not full-time goaltenders. Like Jonathan Quick, you cannot underestimate that guy, but he's not a starting goaltender. But he's one I probably would start. You know what we say for the Olympics coming up? We need a goalie. <laughs> we do. All of ours are in Can jail. Can you do it? Uh, we need a goalie. <laughs> That's an inside joke That's around a, here. We're going to move on. You like that on. one, Ben? I loved it. We're going to move on. Uh, one game, one forward. Connor McDavid. That was easy. 48% of the votes said Connor McJesus. 12% said Sidney Crosby. 6% Nathan McKinnon and 5% say Kucherov. Which is crazy. <clears throat> crazy to me. Obviously, McDavid is. But Nate, I would have Nathan McKinnon on my team before any other player in the National Besides Hockey McDavid. League. Besides McDavid. Well, of course. But, yeah. Number but two. these are the players. Yeah. You're going to see a theme here, by the way. Actually, I'll put it, say it now because I'll probably forget. Austin Matthews doesn't appear almost anywhere in these polls of players. Yeah, I'm not really surprised. Yeah, I, there's. I'm, I'm not, and I say this because of this, and I have no idea what the answer is on these. However, I know why Sidney Crosby is number two. He's a team guy. He's a friggin' captain. Exactly. Sidney Crosby is a captain. Austin Matthews is not a captain. Just because Sam Reinhardt has 50 plus goals or Zach Hyman has 50 plus goals, they wouldn't be on this list. They're yeah. not leaders. None of the goalies surprised me. None of the forwards surprised me. But all of the defensemen surprised me. By the okay. way. Okay. So one game, one D man. Who are you taking? It shouldn't have surprised me, by the way. I should have known, but it did. Uh, I would probably say my heart would want to go with Drew Doughty or Eric Carlson. And we both whiffed. Kale McCarr, the Colorado oh, Avalanche. Oh, man, I forgot. <laughs> it's just because I didn't even think of McCarr. Yeah. Neither did I. I well, forgot. Why do we not think of Kale McCarr? No, but yeah, McCarr, yeah, come on. He's, he's the face of Calgary minor hockey. Kale McCarr is what they tell me in Calgary. Um, and then 56% is Kale McCarr. Very long drop off down to Victor Hedman. 10%. Eh, Hedman's slow. He's too He's too slow. He's a liability now. 5% Roman Yossi, 4% Quinn Hughes, who I would have voted for. And to, again, these are the players. I have. A, you, you can't argue with the players. Yeah, yeah. Right? 
The media, I don't have a problem arguing with. But I would have said Alex Petrangelo. He's won two Stanley Cups recently. Vegas last year, St. Louis in 2019. He was the captain. There's a lot of guys, though. Like, if you look at a guy like Chris Letang, look what he's done for Pittsburgh. He's done so much in Pittsburgh that he's not my favorite player. But, man, he's just a guy that really, I wouldn't vote for him, but... There's a lot of defensemen out there. A lot. Of, the Rangers mm-hmm. have some good defensemen. There's a lot of guys. Uh, you know, oddly enough, Adam Fox did not make this yeah, list, it's... but he is coming up. Here's one that shouldn't surprise anybody. I don't think best stick handler. The kids will love this. The best stick handler. Oh, I... Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, it'd have to be McDavid. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. To be honest, the more I think, because I hear about Connor McDavid more than I hear about anything around the house, but I'm kind of realizing he is that good, but I'm sitting there going, why then is there even a debate over who's the MVP? Why is there even a debate? Thank you. I don't know. Why is there ever a debate? Next question. Okay. One McDavid, two Patrick Kane, three Jack Hughes, four Nikita Kucherov. Kuch is up there in a lot of these categories. Kucherov is just so... I don't know if his... I honestly don't really watch his stick handling, but he's good with the puck. He can put the puck wherever he wants. Skill-wise, I guess, yeah. A um, couple more. Well, they're all interesting. Who is the most complete player in the National Hockey League, according to the players? Connor McDavid. Wrong. <clears throat> Nate McKinnon? Sidney Crosby. Okay. 38%. And a Florida Panther, who happens to just be on this desk right now, was second at 14%, most complete player. Who? Barkey. Are they talking, and this is not... 200-foot game, I would guess. Who's the most complete player? I guess, too, if you look at the... the, I'm going back to the Crosby thing. Like, I think about, like, the most complete player you'd want on your team because of X, Y, Z. You know, like I said, Crosby's a leader. He ain't better than McDavid. Look at what we saw the other night with McDavid picking McKinnon's pocket. I mean, McDavid back checks. He does everything. You don't see Crosby do all that same stuff, but yeah, can't pick McDavid for everything. Over I here. will, though. Yeah, win a cup. That's not what the question is. We're was. brought to you by DraftKings, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours, and they're introducing the no-sweat bet for new customers up to $1,000. Get a bonus bet back in the amount of your original bet if your first wager doesn't hit. Promo code THPN. Use it now. It stands for the Hockey Podcast Network, THPN. We're also brought to you by the Beach House Pompano. When we have live guests here on Cats and Bolts, they get gift cards to the Beach House, a scenic rooftop restaurant on the shores of Pompano Beach. And Baresco, a tropical, out- a tropical outpost serving only the freshest tacos and just... Lush Jungle Vibes, located at 225 North Pompano Beach Boulevard. At the last Panthers game I was at, some of the staff said to me, you really like that beach house. I said, they love the Panthers. They're big Panthers fans. We love the beach house. Hi, Thad. There's our weekly shout-out. He better be watching. To our dude. He watches every week, like all Florida hockey fans. we got to speed this up. I hope you're having as much fun as we are. Who's the player you enjoy playing against the least? but would most prefer to have on your team? That's tough because I, I don't play in the league, but if I had to guess who they would pick, it would probably be like Brad Marchand. Yeah, he's number one. Okay, It's a very wide open, ambiguous question though, isn't it? Marchand's one, McDavid's two. Oh, well, you can't defend him. Well, and he yeah, he makes you look silly, I, right? Yeah. So who would want that? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody no. would want that. Uh, Matthew Kachuk, 8%. People don't like playing against him, but they'd like to have him on their team. Moving on. Best outlet passer. I did get a kick out of this the other night uh, watching on Bally Sports uh, Ottawa. By the way, everybody bitching that the game was on Bally but not on television. Sign up and watch the game. Quit your bitching. God, people like to complain. But anyways, Yeah, your boy Jovo says on there, uh, Stollers fires the puck up to the Ottawa blue line, and Jovo goes, that's what we call a quick up. And I'm like, I thought everybody knew that. A quick up. Maybe they don't. I don't yeah. know. Jovo's, so, you got to remember, Jovanovsky's used to being here. Half the things yeah. that come out of his mouth the first 10 years he was here, people probably looked at him like he was an alien. Yeah, I find it. The reason I say that, I was surprised you had to explain a quick up. And I would think, I would hope you all know. I'm sure you do. 
best outlet passer. Mind you, even on NHL radio this morning, where I got the idea for this show topic today, had to explain what a best outlet passer is. The best first pass. Who makes the best first pass among defensemen in the NHL? I'm going to assume it was Adam Fox because of what you said before. He actually is tied for second. Okay. Uh, then it, then it's probably Kale McCarr. Yeah, Kale McCarr, mm-hmm. followed by Quinn Hughes, Adam Fox, Victor Hedman. Yes, Hedman, I'll give him credit. He is really good with the puck like that. Absolutely. We do need to speed it up, but I'm just having so doggone much fun. I can tell you We don't are. need to speed anything up. Best playmaker? Might surprise you. Surprise me. Well, then it's obviously not McJesus. Best playmaker. Kuch. Oh, yeah, Kucherov. Yeah, definitely. I mean, besides McDavid. <laughs> but no, Kucherov, like I just said, he can make passes that people don't even see coming. There you go. Yeah. Um, McJesus is number two. And then Leon Dreisaitl, three. And then Breadsticks, Artemi Panarin, fourth of the New York Rangers. Um, most difficult defenseman to play in the D zone. Or actually, most difficult to play in the D zone. Doesn't have to be a defenseman. Most difficult. A D man won it though. Most difficult to play in the defensive zone. Yeah. Most difficult to play. Adam Fox. Again, ambiguous question. It's Hedman. Twenty yeah. yeah. percent. I would have voted. I would have said Vasilevsky. Yeah. Well, that's what I was kind of right? thinking. If we were ambiguous. on the goaltender thing, yeah. McDavid again was second. Nine <laughs> oh, percent. Terrible. Yeah. And then here's out of nowhere, Jacob Slavin of the Carolina Hurricanes finishes third. Okay, I believe that. Okay. If the players say that, there's yeah. no doubt. Yeah. And then Anzi mm-hmm. Kopitar of the Kings. Wow. Fourth. Okay. Who's the best draw man in the NHL? You'll never get it. Best faceoff guy. Mm. You'll never get it. Ryan O'Reilly of the Nashville Predators. No kidding. Yeah. Which, yeah. to be honest, I feel like you could just go. They have a stat for that at NHL.com, yeah. don't they? I mean, yeah. You could just very... Yeah, but the, the players taking the face off against him would feel it more. Yeah. Number two, Sidney Crosby. And right a hair behind O'Reilly was Cros. Uh, number three, Claude Giroux. Number four, Luke Glendinning. There's a lot of lightning on this list, mm-hmm. interestingly enough. Who's got the best style? Which is, frankly... Something I don't pay attention to, what the guys are wearing coming they're into the rink. I know you gonna, understand that. They're probably going to say Austin Matthews because I know he was... The only category he shows up in. <laughs> was it Austin Matthews? Number three. Oh. Fuck. He was third. Finished third. Number one, David Pasternak of all things. <sighs> Maybe because he's European and they say they got the best. I don't know. We Willie Nylander was a second. Yeah, the Euros, they know how to dress. Matthews three, Kucherov four. I feel like when I see the Panthers go into a game, they're all wearing the same thing. Uh, brown or black overcoat. Nothing flashy. Because they're frozen. Yeah. Anywhere they go that's not here, it's cold to them. Freezing their nuts off. This is a surprise and a fun one. What is the toughest arena to play in as a visiting team in the National Hockey League? It was a surprise? Yeah. I would think Montreal or Toronto would be hideous to play in. Uh, Pittsburgh or Philly? Wouldn't you love to sit down and say, you know, what's your criteria for this? Why? It's T-Mobile yeah. Arena in Vegas. Oh. Which I have been there. And when the when the first game I was there, uh, I got a text from the GM. Your boy, Krim, text, texted me after the game, the Golden Knights GM, and said, what did you think? And I'm like, I didn't know where to look, Krim. There was explosions going off and Cirque del Soleil Dan- performers dropping from the ceiling and explosions going off and dancing girls. But I mean, after a while, you'd get over that. So I don't know why. It's probably distracting. When you go to Montreal, they're not screwing around with people dancing on the ice. They're not doing any of that crap. No. Well, T-Mobile's one. PNC Arena in Carolina's two. Maybe it's all those tailgaters out front that make it hard to get your bus in. I don't know. (laughs) What is a slap shot? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I could circle, but it'll cost you extra. (laughs) Three, TD Garden in Boston. Which, by the way, Johnny O from Johnny O's Gymnasium is going to be coming on this show coming up in the weeks ahead. So get ready for that. The Garden. Number four, Ball Arena in Denver. Number four, no Canadian teams in the top four. And to be honest, the fifth team's a Canadian rink, and you mentioned them, uh, Bell Center. Centre Bell in Montreal. You haven't been there yet, have you? Mm-mm. We got to get there on the bucket list. Um, just a couple last ones. Best Ice? Edmonton. There too. Okay. It's Centre Bell. It may, I mean, it makes sense. Like the ground is colder up there. <laughs> uh, Montreal is number one. Edmonton number two. Winnipeg number three. All cold places. 
<laughs> and number four, XL Energy Center in Minneapolis, also cold. Also the tundra. Um, This wide open to interpretation, I would suggest, but what's the number one global destination you'd like to see NHL games played in? That was the question. I'm going to have to add on and say outside Canada and the U.S. What other countries? Well, they've Take played. Take a swing. It's a hard one. They've played in it's some where places the, Some already. that where they've hosted games. I guess if it was, I don't know, not as a player, but I would say like somewhere like Sweden would be. They're number two. Yeah. Italy was one. I know. Even Ben. That surprised Ben. Cuba didn't make it, Ben. <laughs> Italy won, Sweden two, England three, and Switzerland four. So just so you know, if uh, people say they don't know us, they, they say more they don't know me more than you, your friends are all watching. I have, I've never been to Europe. I have no desire to go to Europe. We're going to take her there for her birthday coming up. Spo not coming spoiler up. Spoiler alert. Not coming up. It'll like, be a few years. Yeah. When she turns 30. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, good save, um, Chevers. <laughs> but I'm going to say Mexico. I don't like cold weather. If we're going to if we're going to take this place to far this game to far flung places, let's go to Mexico. There was the talk about it in the fall, as you remember, <laughs> right? I think we talked about that on our first episode. Yeah, maybe. yeah. But there's only one place that I want to go and live, and it's right here. I don't ever want to leave the area code. Period. But remember when it was like, th when we were growing up, the thought of having hockey in South Florida would have been like, what? Yeah. How? How? Technology's come a long way, obviously. I guess yeah. Mexico City, but I think that's a little too <laughs> And long. I love it. Hey, talking to your guy at Johnny O's this morning, one of the guys who was at his first NHL game of the night at the uh, against the Sens, I said, what'd you think of Amerit Bank Arena? He goes, I can't believe how cold it was. It's freezing. That would be a great poll question. What's the coldest rink in the NHL? The coldest rink in the National Hockey League is the the rink here. Yeah. By far. Every general manager that I've run into upstairs, I'm like, do you agree this is the coldest rink in the league? They're like, yup. This is what the NHL scouts say, and my dad was one for 26 years. The further south you go, the colder the rinks get. Which naturally it has to be yeah it's the way it goes it yeah. has to what be they cold say. look at when we were in edmonton in the summer for the world juniors a year and a half ago how cold it was in there because it was 95 degrees outside it's a lot colder in there in the summer than it is during the winter um if you notice by the way we're wrapping it up here everybody if you notice we did not do audience questions because we can't do it every week um maybe we will next week although next week will be our playoff preview and we all can't wait for that we'll Ooh. go through and talk about preview all the series looks like leafs panthers bruins lightning but a couple uh categories i would have liked to have seen that i'm shocked weren't here would be best shot and if that was the case, I, Matthews would have to, based on what you hear, Matthews would be one, Connor Bedard would be two. Yeah, I would, honestly, I would think Connor Bedard would be a harder shot to stop than Matthews. From what I've seen, Bedard has a harder shot, a more deceiving shot. Hopefully they add that next year. That's what I'd like to see. Uh, most feared player to play, it would be? Well, it depends what you're... Of course, ambiguous question. That's what's fun about yeah. it. It's McDavid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, but... Just saying. Uh, best fighter? That's always fun. Yeah. I don't know. I saw this yeah. question the other day. Is Matt Rempe, the six foot seven, eighth wonder of the world with the Rangers, is he good or bad for the NHL? I'm like, it doesn't matter. He's there. I'm the best team in the NHL. I was literally just thinking, if we asked these player survey questions and you and I raced back 30 years and we answered the questions of 30 years ago, they would have completely different answers. Why? Who's the toughest guy to play? Would you be like, oh, Bob Probert? <laughs> you know, that'd be the first thing that came to your mind. It'd be stuff like that. Yeah. We different. covered this earlier, but best coach would be fun. I like. I love to know what the players say. Who's the best coach? Who's the best yeah, but GM? And for that matter, who's the best broadcaster? Because the players all watch the games too. That's all fun stuff that they didn't put in the survey. Yeah, they used to. They don't know the coach. Like, how's a player going to know unless he played for they that talk. coach? <laughs> okay. What? I think it's more them playing against each other that they're trying to yeah. get to the bottom of. Okay. Well, to have a goalie survey, who's got the hardest shot? That would be fun. Yeah. Right? Hardest person to defend. Yeah. So, anyways, who the hell are we? Who stands in front of me the most and blocks me and screens me too much? Right. Who's got the biggest ass? <laughs> we, <laughs> we're winding it up. You're welcome.
Great job, Serena. I know. Thank you, Benny Boy. We'll see you next week here on Cats and Bolts. (laughs) 